face mare plăcere să vă prezint pe Patricia, pe care o deja pot consider o bună prietenă. Pentru noi a fost o experiență destul de inedită să lucrăm împreună cu o companie precum Vitra. La Vitra există relații de prietenie între companie, dealer, clienți. Este maniera lor de a, de a lucra cu oamenii. Dacă nu se pot prieteni cu dealerii lor, nu prea știu cum să lucreze cu ei. Relația am dezvoltat-o de-a lungul timpului, ne cunoaștem foarte bine, ne înțelegem foarte bine, lucrurile merg foarte firesc între noi, toate deciziile. Ce te ajută foarte mult experiența ei pe o piață, similară din punct de vedere poate al tipologiei, Italia. O piață extrem de sofisticată, de surprinzătoare și calitate destul de multe dure de cap poate și ei. România e o piață un pic mai echilibrată pentru ea până în alta. Uh, și am să invit pe Shell să vă povestească câteva, câte, câteva lucruri din perspectiva ei de membru al echipei Vitra. Ce înseamnă pentru Patricia, Patricia Bartolini Vitra? Da. Nu? No? Da. <laughs> da? I have only two hands this my phone, and sometimes I need a link when I lose myself with my all my thoughts because I have a lot of information to tell and sometimes I'm afraid that I'm missing something. So sometimes this is my little brain. Okay. Okay, breaking the walls. <laughs> Now we heard a lot of, lot of information and uh, I'm rounding up this uh, circuit with a little bit who is Vitra. What are we doing, where we come from, our ideas, um, our philosophy. Um, I start work with, my, with our mission statement because this is actually the heart and the idea what we are for. I'm not going to read it because you are, you are able to read it by yourself. I'm going to give you some few seconds and I'm going to go too into details about what has been written in the mission statement of Mitra. Mitra was founded in 1950. We are a family-driven company now, the third generation. We uh, have our headquarter in the Svetland, Switzerland. This is next to the border to uh, Germany. We have our production in Germany, the headquarters in Switzerland. Um, still, we have the board members, Mr. Orfeba, now with the nephew, which is uh, 30, 34 years old, Nora Feba. Um, to the Vitra group, it belongs Vitra itself with the uh, offices, then we have Belux and uh, Belux and the Ansorg, they are doing lighting. Um, Artec has been born 2013. This is a Finnish company. Then we have also shop fitting, where we come from actually. We have uh, we, we have been doing shop fitting since 1934 uh, with his own arm display. Um, this is also is doing shop meeting with the clothes, also a car, uh, showrooms. We are represented through our subsidiaries or through dealers here in Romania. We have two dealers, one is Intro and one is Teco in Bucharest. We have our own production in Germany. We started uh, 1957 with uh, the production of the aluminium group. This is the aluminium chair over there from uh, with uh, the license under Herb Miller. We have uh, different kind of productions all over the world because we have also a long ways. Like in Japan, you have a delivery time of two weeks. Only the shipment costs you around four to five weeks by boat. That means we have to be very, very flexible and quickly in the market. So we have our assembly in Japan itself. They have the parts of Vitra. And when an order is coming in, we only have to fly over the covers or missing things. So we are quite flexible also with the amount of the market. Our showrooms look always quite the same. We have a corporate identity. It is, um, you know, to see we have in Melbourne, 
as through uh, New York, Los Angeles, our own sh showrooms. We develop our product with authors. This is a combination about technology and engineers from Vitra in the combination with authors or designers. We started many, many years ago uh, with Bellini, with Antonio Citerio. We are since the 80s, 1974. We started with our own production office chairs. And this is a little bit mission again. Design, the word design is very spoiled. This is and my opinion. Because every, everything is design. A nice space is designed, the floor is designed. You say it as design because you think you can have, you know, you don't have a specific name for a product. Vitra has another way of thinking about what is design. It is a combination of many factors which is leading them to a product. So you have the function and the ergonomics when you take, for example, an office chair. An office chair has not only five stars and, and uh, armrests, but it has different kind of points. Why a chair has to be like this? Why does it have this height? Why we took this material? And we always try to have the, the right answer for different kind of person. There is not one product which fits to everybody. This is why we have a big range. Everybody should have the choice to have the correct product he can choose for himself. Private person as also a customer at the office. So this is what Charles Reed said, what I really, really like, that the detail is not a detail. And if you see a product also underneath, to go into detail, you see the beauty of it. Because it has been engineered till this thing is true, and this makes the product beautiful. We have different kind of um, sectors. We have one side, the environment of the office, which Pirio explained quite well. We have the home sector, which is very, very important and is growing. The home office as office at home, it is a combination. We, you can take actually the complete range and mix products from the home to the office, office at home. As we are working many, many hours, we try to create an ambience which helps you to enjoy your stay. Enjoy to be there at the office. Now, like Piri said, you choose wherever you want to go to work. So that uh, you also have the combinations, the colors. It helps you create different kind of areas. These are going to be products you find in the living room, but you can also use it at the office. You can go also in public spaces. Take a signature and can kind of have a, an object or fix it to the floor. Cafeterias, airports. There is actually no sector where we could not try to implement. And these are the three sectors we are working. Even in churches, which could be used or one of our products. The longevity, the quality, uh, the flexibility. This is what we are thinking about a good design. Then, of course, we have the classics. Classics are very important for Vitra. We have uh, a lot of drawings, ideas from Charles and Reims. We have the complete archive from Vera Panton, where we can go into, step back and see what they have been doing. We have a lot of products taken out of the, of the archive, like the Panton Junior, which never could be produced because we didn't have the technology at that time, 1970. But we retake it and we, we relaunch it as an addition. This is also uh, one part of only selling offices. There are different kind of uh, views what we is doing. And this is one, one is also cultural. One important thing is quality. We are on a very high end with our products. We are absolutely aware about this. Good quality means also that you have to control your quality. We are depending with our tools, with our suppliers. We have to control them that our products are 100% perfect. We have our test center where we take out of um, the logistic department, we take out already products which are produced. We do a test as if they would be new 
And then for all the complete cycles, they really need to have like a DGS. This is the, the quality um, certificate we are getting from Germany. So we are sure that products which are sent out have always 100% quality. Plus, trying always new material. We need to know where is actually the end of this uh, flexibility of polypropylene, polyamide. We have, the we have the possibility to test the chair till they are breaking. So we know this is the maximum of the fabric we are using as we are developing material compositions as also fabrics. We sell from Saudi Arabia through South Africa, Europe. This is also important to see that we are supplying with one product all over the world. And we have different kinds of situations. One it is cold, one it is very hot, a lot of sunshine, rain, dusty, and the product has to last anyway. So we have to consider also color, the coloration that a white is not getting gray, uh, blue is not getting light, light blue. And these are all qualities we can actually see and um, test in our production in the test center. One part is also the Metro Campus. Metro Campus has a long, long history. It started, this is our last one, this is uh, from Herzog and Nemo, from 2000 and um, period. 10. 10. <laughs> exactly. This is our land disease. Um, a showroom for home products, over 2,000 meters, square meters. These are 10 houses on five floors. It is completely geothermic because we have the lock that underneath of uh, the building there is water. So we pump up the water and we, do, we create our own electricity. This is also a way of environment. It's not only selling and doing profit, but on the other side also cultural way. Um, teaching private person and to see how, for example, a living room could look like. This is also training and help persons who are not, do not have the possibility to study architecture or interior design to see what is design, what is quality, what is an original. Why should I buy an original and not a copy? Take lunch share, copied all over the world. And it is a pity to buy a copy if you have the possibility to appreciate what is an original and what is behind of an original. It's a complete story. It's your homage to the designer. It is an homage to what he has been doing the royalties we are paying also to these designers. This is the opposite also to which you have to be considered. Production. We have an assembly, um, two assembly factories. We started in 91. 81 we had a big fiber and truck. We had to, have, we had to rebuild immediately new production because from one side from one day to the other everything burned out and uh, with the production side uh, Nicholas, Grim Nicholas Grimshaw made a concept about the future campus what is needed what is going to be built in this campus the Vitra campus has 250,000 square meters in total South the Valley in 284 it was the anniversary of Billy Feldbaum and the sons wanted to give him a little present. These are the three tools you need to produce a chair. At this event there was a Dalando in the audience. It was springtime. And as you see in the background there are cherry trees. And in April in Germany the, the cherry trees have a lot of very nice flowers. And as Japanese, he loved cherries and the field and everything. So I'm coming back to this history afterwards. We the design museum in 89 with Frank Gehry. The first um, building he has been doing outside of uh, the US. He was, uh, Frank Gehry was a very good friend of Willy Feldbaum, the owner of the founder of Vitra. And indeed, um, they started with a museum with the exhibition of the collection of chairs. Mr. Feynman is a collector of chairs. There are holy halls, we call them actually quite nice, with a lot of prototypes. And also giving, I remember I've been working for Vitor now 23 years. And at the beginning, there was an exhibition with uh, a lot of nice chairs, starting from the 18th uh, century. And we had design lessons about chairs. 
why they are coming from, why there is a county level, why there is now a poster who did the first uh, four leg chair. And this was like a lesson about chairs. With the time, with the design museum started to have exhibitions which are all over the world, it's like road shows. We have been doing uh, in Bucharest already two of them. Perhaps you have been seeing them. One was in the exhibition, and uh, this year? Last year? Two years ago, two years 100 ago. miniatures. Yeah, the one that was this year. No, last, last, year. last year. We had 100 masterpieces. So we always try also to have the, these road shows with, from the museum, also here in Bucharest, that you see what we are doing, not only from the cultural way, not only selling on purpose. We are not selling so much. <laughs> I'm going to change here. <laughs> <laughs> the conference, Party of the Tao Angok, now come back to my history on balancing tools on the anniversary. They met each other, and the Tao Angok did for us the public of with a lot of uh, conferencing. The nice thing about it that he had to cut only two cherry trees. This was a name also from his side. He put it as square that it matches into the field. The courtyard, it was like in a courtyard, and it has been on the level of the street, so it goes down actually. So it is nice implemented into the, in the, in the, in the cherry field for not disturbing. Um, it is concrete with a mix of ash with a wooden floor from America. I don't know which one actually, it's all. The fire station. 81, we had this big fire, which uh, was burned down almost 80%. And uh, we said that next time it's not going to happen again. So we took that said we need a fire station. We had to organize ourselves, we had our staff, we had four cars. We had a permanent team working there, like waiting for the next fire, which never came. Hope very lucky us. It was made of concrete. There are no 90 degrees angle. Do, do we have a three-dimensional um, impression when you get in. It's very destructive. And this is typical for Saadi actually. You feel quite being having a getting seasick because you don't have a 90 degree angle and usually a person look on straight angles to find orientation. But there inside you don't find it. So you feel quite destructive sometimes when you're inside. Exactly the opposite of the Dawando. The Dawando gives you the peace of well being forever actually. Here it's the opposite. But it's nice to to feel everything together. After many years, we, we saw that it's not worth actually to keep this high cost, and we gave all the cars to the, um, the to the city of Valmarain. Here we do exhibitions, our Christmas um, Christmas parties here inside. Um, we have our presentations of new products inside. So it is a um, very efficient from the way that we are using it for many, many uh, events. Alvaro Sita did the production for his own display. There really is a combination, uh, there is a bridge, which is, now this time this is broad, because usually when the sun is shining, the bridge is completely up. They are like um, collectors who see, who remark immediately when it's raining, then it goes down. So you can go from one side to the other side, you're not getting wet. It, what the nice thing is about all those architects that they are take, they are very, they consider each other, they respect themselves. So the bridge is always up when the sun is shining, so you see through to the Zahadid. <coughs> this is also as a respect each other, uh, each uh, architect from the each other. We have the Bapin Sifurido, there we do also have presentations. A little gas station, this was uh, in 53, it was the first product which has been produced in Seri. Um, Jean, um, Jean Fouvet, he built pieces, packed them and sent it to their destination. And only two persons were able to build it up quite quickly, very fast. The bus stop in front of the Vitra building, and this is um, next to Bayern Rhein, about 50 Calories, we have a second production made from a Dolce Dario. This is the Vitra House again. Then we have Sala 2010. We have also to say that we receive for all those buildings the Pritzker Prize. This is unique in the world. 
your uh, architecture campus where you can view tours inside, where you see outside as inside or with a guided tour. This is the production of um, the shop fitting. It is acrylic uh, from the outside. It has been opened in 210. It uh, has an open shape, actually. It's not a completely rounded open. This is the canvas from the inside. This is our headquarters in uh, Bisfeld in Switzerland. There we have the developing department, marketing. Um, here is also the international market where I am, actually. There's a building from Gary quite funny because on the one, one side is the villa, very creative, very grand, very colorful, with a lot of meeting room and the, and the mensa. And on the back you have the square with open space, uh, open space with uh, offices. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Let's hope we have questions. My lead, I have it in the blur. I will, I will put a question right there. Okay. I was thinking about that. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a stupid question, but anyway, why did Vitra invest so much money in building strange buildings in a field? Good question. <laughs> it started first with the museum to have um, differently. There's a way of thinking about Swiss that when they are rich, they share their enrichment with poor person. They give like museums, foundations, and they get the opportunity to have an approach, something they would make reach. The visual design museum is a kind of this idea, because at the beginning we had exhibitions, it was free of charge, or we just go own a little man about five euro entrance instead of very high for being a museum. And this is the cultural way of approaching. Then it started also to be a need. If you have seen the open space, uh, we are working there with 120 persons which can get up to 180. We don't have any possibility to meet. At least 30, 35 persons don't have a meeting room in our citizen office. So there was also the need to have meeting rooms. So we created that Tadalando. Of course, we could have taken all the architects, but there is always a relation from Mr. Feldbaum, Billy Feldbaum, Paul Feldbaum, the family to the architect. They have a personal relation to each other. Friendship, they get to know each other. Uh, Herzog and Weberl, they are from Basel. They, have, they know each other, the family knows each other they, for many, many years. So it is obvious that they are considering the person they believe in. And there is obviously a need, like the Vitra House, we had, and still have, four or five showrooms. You, can, you have to run around the complete campus to see all our products, and this is unfriendly. So we would like to have one center where everybody sees something, and then we build it. And this is, for example, outside, so everybody can, it's free of charge, you don't have to pay for the Vitra House. You get in, you have a look, you see, you collect, you find images, and you do your own thoughts, how a living room or, um, or a bedroom could look like, and then you go away. It's not that, it's not, has been, it's, it's, it's a history, which actually grew with the time. Because I don't think that at the beginning, Mr. Fremont was thinking about the Vitro campus, and then we do architecture tours, and we are the one, the one in the world, absolutely not. It's grew. Is it okay for you? Thank you. It's fine. We have a question here. Hello, thank you for your presentation. I was wondering what does Vitra expect from a market like Romania in terms of not only sales, but the influence you have here by bringing furniture that is so well known and also very copied around here. Good question. Better than yours. <laughs> Um, I see it from the one side, absolutely you're right, I'm interested in two sales. Because I'm a salesperson, I would like to sell. The market is, in Ukraine, is quite difficult. There are opportunities, and I think you are in a changement. And it, it's not that um, with uh, these events, with the exhibitions we are doing, with, uh, with the intro, 
these are things we, I, we, we see the appreciation, and I see the appreciation that there is the interest also in these kind of events. This is why we are doing it. The second is also sales. Um, of course, we have on the one side the private person, we have on the other side the public, and we have companies, international companies, who are investing, who are coming to Bucharest and build new offices. And there is our interest to sell in this case. But we try to, to implement the philosophy to change also your world here in Bucharest. And I think changing at the office means changing at home, or changing at home means changing at the office. And this is a, also a, a kind of play about the architect who has the power to pass a little bit uh, like the owner, and from the other side also the employee who is asking for new possibilities, new way of working. Because you are traveling and you see all over the world what is, ha what is happening. And so we try, to, it's a picture about um, living future and also to adapt about new situation here because I know exactly open space is perhaps 5% but all the other ones have their senior offices or they are working in two or three or four person. And only on four person you can create a little environment. Only with a little sofa on the end, some birds on, 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 on the shelf. And I think this is absolutely okay for, for ourselves because you understand the concept about open space and breaking the walls, about communication. Copies is a theme which is very delicate, unfortunately. Um, we have a, there is no Romanian law which really helps us in stopping copies. And this is our problem we are facing at Vitra. We have a lawyer who is sending letters who tells them to stop, um, to stop producing or at least expose them in their showroom. Because Mihai, a lot of times, he sends me emails where he says, look, there is again a copy. So we go with the lawyer, really, we try to stop this because we think it's not fair. It's absolutely not fair to the person the author who did this product. It has not to be chosen reigns. It cannot be one of your products. If a designer is developing a product, it's not fair that you take a product and you sell it of half of the price because it's your idea and it is worth that you are selling the original. And we try with letters, with lawyers. We also went already to court, but it is really, really difficult. As long as you don't have a basic uh, regulation in Romania, you don't have any possibilities. In Germany, in Switzerland, in France, it's quite easy. Difficult also in Italy and the uh, UK. Yeah. There are, it depends really on the law. Because I would be happy if we had like a nice page I would send letters, many, many letters I would send to a lot of the flyers and copyists. We have another question here. Talking about Romania, are companies interested in buying uh, furniture from Vitra? Yeah. What are you, can you repeat, please? Uh, talking about Romania, are companies here interested in buying furniture from Vitra? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we haven't seen so much stuff like this. <laughs> You have to see, one is uh, the sector, private sector, so you don't see it really in public. And we have been working now since a year with uh, Temple together and they are doing contract business. Contract is quite difficult because you need time. When a business starts, it is a project of two years. So you don't have a target which is on short term, you have to work on long term. And of course, it is difficult to find a customer who is buying on the Vitra because uh, the budget is going to be yeah, up into the sky. But a nice mixture, this is the healthy thing that you try to have on one side um, areas with local producer and then from the other side to take Vitra to surplus. Uh, in different kind of areas, like here at the beginning you have a an waiting area, you have a nice lounge area, you can exchange them also. It doesn't have to be a lounge chair, it could also be a chair which costs 150 euro list, but you create anyway very nice areas. Perhaps Mia, you can tell a little bit more about um, how you approach it, because you sell more to private person actually. Well, we sell a lot to private persons, uh, with a couple of uh, public uh, projects. I can give you two examples. One is Phil, it's a restaurant, it's a mixture of restaurant and 
area for uh, kids. And the other one is uh, Hermes, which is an uh, interesting uh, new concept. But both projects were made with very talented uh, uh, architects. So for us, uh, the, the best way to approach a client is through architects. Architects understand Vitra, they understand the philosophy, they understand the passion behind, so they can help us sell. Without architects, it's difficult for us to, to have wonderful projects. Of course, with the end uh, client that want to buy something for the house, we can have a talk, we can uh, discuss, we can tell him a lot of things about the story behind each product. Uh, but for larger projects, we need support, and uh, the support comes especially from, uh, from architects and designers. And uh, we have many friends in this, uh, in this field, and we are growing this circle. And hopefully, we'll see more and more projects. Yeah, but the architects also have problems with the meaning of, uh, with the way of thinking of the clients because uh, I've been to Vitra two weeks ago and I was living in Basel in a hostel furnished with Vitra while here in Romania a, a hotel for four stars is furnished with copies of Vitra. So how do you deal with this mentality difference? It's, it's difficult to deal directly with the client because uh, most of the clients they don't have they don't have the knowledge of design. They don't know so much about design. Even though they have uh, good intentions, some of them, some of them are fooled by architects. They are also bad guys in uh, in the architectural field. Bad guys that says, okay, if you want to put these pieces, just put them. Don't don't don't. Do it. I can find something cheaper for you. I have some dealers. They can help you supply for you for your project. Sometimes they have this pressure, the, the architects, to just do the project. They hope that things will be fine in the end, as in the renderings, but unfortunately it doesn't look fine when you see the, the end project. So my, my uh, advice for architects would be, if you don't have the budget, create something. Do something cheap but nice and beautiful and different. Don't bother with fakes and uh, pathetic copies. They look cheap, they look nasty. Yeah, that's why in Romania luxury is Ikea by now. It's no problem. Ikea was a good step for the market, from my point of view. Clients uh, start to understand that you cannot live your whole life with Ikea. It's difficult. Because things are starting to broke. It's normal. This is Ikea philosophy. Uh, so little by little, people can combine. Maybe have a nice chair from Vitra, a sofa from Ikea, a nice lamp from another company. We need to start to understand the benefits of uh, aesthetics around us. This is bottom line for us, at least. Sanchez, a big discussion. The final one. Noi, noi la Inter nu ne grăbim foarte tare, sincer. Adică faptul că suntem pe piață de 11 ani și că n-am făcut niciun compromis în portofolul de branduri pe care le, le distribuim, e că arată oarecum exigența noastră și crederea că lucrurile se mișcă, sunt doar 25 de ani de de democrație, sau nu știu cum să-i spunem, dar nu mai legem acum, uh, lucrurile se schimbă, dar se schimbă extrem de încet, că facem doi pași înainte și unul înapoi. Din câte așa m-am mai maturizat și eu între timp și mi se pare că e firesc, nu cred că există o societate perfectă, că și e în de la ale lor. Uh, cred că ne, ne ducem în direcția cea bună uh, și uh, evenimentele de genul ăsta ne ajută să uh, câștigăm un pic de simpatie sau să convingem oamenii că a investit într-un obiect original este e, ok, sigur, o chestiune de potență financiară, până la urmă, dar nu imaginați că lucrurile astea sunt mai scumpe decât o geantă selin. Sunt mult mai diferit. Dai că un scaun pe care stă Mihai 101 de euro, o geantă selin, vă zic eu că e vreo mie și ceva, 2.000-3.000, că cât timp să mai și o poți stări lung și te plictisești cu siguranță. Deci, dacă să ne gândim la potențialul oamenilor, există foarte mult potențial financiar, e vorba de prioritizare și, din punctul de vedere, noi avem un pic răbdare ca oamenii să călătorească mai mult, să înceapă să facă diferențe. Apar destul de mulți bloggeri care, care, care vorbesc și cu Cadera Fulvu, care încearcă să facă educație, că să o facem cu pipeta, pentru că lucrurile nu se schimbă peste noapte, dar noi sperăm să fim aici și peste 10 și peste 20 de ani cu același brip brand, cred eu, îngrijit și vânzând branduri 
și clas și ai care dar și lucruri noi, întotdeauna autentice. Da. Și avem răbdare. Avem răbdare și așa, step by step. Mai sunt întrebări? Nu văd. Dacă vrei tu să adaugi ceva, Mihai? Uh, thank you, Patricia, for the presentation. And uh, I hope to see you also here more and more. She's coming now to Bucharest because she really likes Bucharest. And she likes also the restaurants. From her point of view, our city center, the old city center, it's happening. So, what can we say? Bucharest is moving, little by little. Regula. Vă mulțumesc foarte mult pentru prezență. Vreau să vă spun ceva foarte important. Nu s-a terminat. Începe de networking-ul. Încep acele sesiuni frumoase în care puneți toate întrebările pe care le-ați spus, în care vorbiți voi între voi, în care aveți aici ficării, majoritatea mea. Da? Și sper să vă bucurați din plin de următoarea sesiune de networking. Și să nu uitați, este un eveniment frumos pe care Teco și Victor l-au gândit. Noi doar revista Biz am ajutat la organizare. Este un element vitra și vă rog în continuare să vă țineți în minte vitra aproape și de suflet și de minte. Vă mulțumesc și vă invităm la masă.